Hey everybody, and welcome back to Living Large Camping. We have been staying at a beautiful campsite an hour outside of Glenwood Springs. For the last two days, we wanted to put the camera away and just enjoy this area. It is the third week of September, so we are enjoying the fall colors popping outside of our windows, and we can't wait for it to get even better. We've been living full-time on the road for the past 18 months, and one thing that has remained consistent throughout our old setup and our new truck camper is that we cannot generate enough power. A few days ago, we installed something that should solve this issue permanently, so let's go back in time and show you just what that was. <laughs> Today is a really exciting day for us because I think we're about to solve our power generation. We do have a 180 watt solar panel on the roof and it works great as long as we're parked in an open area and it has a ton of sun, but usually we're not parked like that. And so now we're going to install something that should take care of this issue. We've had our Goal Zero 3000X for about a year and a half now and it has been flawless. We've had no issues with our four wheel camper and no issues now with our Lance 815. But again, the one thing that we've struggled with is keeping this thing charged. Goal Zero sells an alternator charger that will charge this at 750 watts while the truck is running. We usually travel a few hours in between our destinations and that would charge this battery empty to full in just about four hours. So we picked one up. It is cheaper than buying a full roof of solar panels and today we're going to install it. First things first, I got to make sure we're installing this thing right. <laughs> our first steps that we're going to do is install the control module into the Goal Zero and then once we get this all installed and situated where it needs to be, then we'll route the cables and install the alternator charger part. I don't think it matters which way we do it, so we're going to stay in the shade for a minute. We have the Yeti link installed and we have it switched over to vehicle mode. Now we need to go ahead and connect the Goal Zero to the truck battery. It comes with a 12 foot EC8 extension cable. We bought two of them because I don't think 12 feet is enough to go out underneath the truck and into the engine bay. So we're going to do one, get outside the camper, and then we'll have a disconnect there to the second one. Yeah, let's plug it into the back and we'll start running cables. inline fused installed on the positive side of the cable. Now it's time to go connect this to the truck's battery and then we don't have to actually connect it to the alternator at all. The Goal Zero will handle all of that inside. Let's go get this connected and route the cables. Now it's time to connect the EC8 extension cable and then we're gonna route it under the truck along the frame and then up in between the truck and the truck bed and over to the battery. that's it. The only thing left is to turn the truck on and start it. I think originally these were made for like sprinter vans because you can just connect to the battery underneath the driver's seat and then you plug it into your battery station somewhere in your conversion. But we had to make do with a different style and hopefully it works out the same. We're gonna go turn the truck on and hopefully this thing will start charging.
just went on. So we got it charging up to like 400 watts, but that was just with the truck idling. So maybe once the battery voltage in the truck regulates itself, then it'll start to pump more in here. But either way, we're gonna put the Goal Zero app on while we're driving and kind of monitor the levels, see what we can bring in. Other than that, pretty sure that install's done. We'll see you on the road. Jumping back into the present time, we wanted to share a few thoughts on the Goal Zero alternator charger and kind of what we've seen with it. We only have about three hours of driving total on it, but that took our batteries from 50% back to 90, which is our full state. We are extremely happy with it right now. It doesn't charge at the 750 watts that it claims to, part of that being that we had to extend the EC8 cable that runs from the battery to the Goal Zero, so we can't push that much power through eight gauge wire. For now, it's still more power than we've ever been able to generate, so we're very happy with it, and it should solve this problem for good. I do need to do a little bit of work on zip tying the cable and kind of making sure that it's routed properly just so it's cleaned up and we don't have any issues of it snagging on something on the road or touching any moving parts underneath the truck. So I'm going to go through, do that, clean it up, and then make sure that we're good to go for the next however long. We know it is very expensive and we have been debating on buying this since last fall when you guys saw that we were dealing with rain and cloudy weather and we just didn't have enough solar. It's the perfect solution for us. If you guys have any more questions about it, please let us know. We'd be happy to answer them, but we don't want to keep boring you about this. So now we're going to take you along for the gorgeous campground that we found for free. We talked a lot last video about our plans coming up and how we're going to try to slow down a little bit being in Colorado for a few weeks. And that means we're also going to try to stay a little bit longer at each site we find. This is a beautiful free camping site and we're going to spend four nights here, which is about the longest we've ever spent anywhere. So it's going to be nice to kind of set up, have a little bit of a routine, and then just not spend as much time behind the wheel. There are so many beautiful areas in this state, so hopefully we're going to be able to take advantage of that. Thank you always for the suggestions that you guys leave in the comments. We try to work those into our route. But yeah, we're just going to continue slowing things down and just enjoying what Colorado has to offer. Yeah. Since it's so pretty here, we just want to sit outside and enjoy the amazing warm weather during the day. It gets really cold at night here, which is a nice change from what we've been dealing with at least a month ago. So we're just going to read. I'm reading a new book, Court of Thorns. I've heard a lot of people mention it, so I'm excited to get into it. I like it so far. I'm about halfway, and Connor is reading a new mystery book. both had a really nice afternoon here just reading in the sun and enjoying some peace and quiet that is the Colorado mountains but now it's time to go explore the area a little bit there have been a ton of cars driving by and heading up the mountain and we haven't gone anywhere past this campground so we're gonna go walk up the road and see if there's anything pretty up there either way it'll be nice to stretch our legs for a little bit <laughs> a 
looks like this will be relatively uphill almost the whole way and I don't think we could have lucked out with a better stretch of weather. It's 68 degrees and sunny all day and then at night it gets to like 40 so it's pretty much perfect. We're still about one week away from peak fall colors but I think our next spot is going to be exactly what we need for it. Well as you can see we are walking backwards for a little bit. Our calves are burning because it is uphill the entire way. And like Connor said, saving the knees. <laughs> and the view is really pretty this way, so kind of a win-win all around. He picked us a flower. <laughs> so kind. We're gonna climb back up the side of the mountain onto the gravel road. We got to a point in this creek here and I don't think we can really cross it. We probably could, but if one of us falls in, we don't have a good way of warming up. So go back on the road and keep walking. Why does he always make it look easy? This is one of those sites that really surprises you. There weren't a ton of reviews online whenever we found it. And when we pulled in here, honestly couldn't believe it was free. And now that we're walking around, seeing all the beautiful trees and the colors. It's just a special spot. We had to get off the trail by the river, which was beautiful, and now we're back on the road walking. But we're just mindlessly walking, enjoying the scenery, and <laughs> look at this view. Honestly, it's unreal. I don't know how we found this, but wow. We're gonna go ahead and turn around here. We made it just over two miles, but there's still a solid two miles to go, and it's getting close to dinner time. So we have seen some incredible views along this hike, and we didn't even know it was really a hike. It is gorgeous out here. a beautiful hike we got to go on a little bike trail so it was by the creek and then the views and all the colors changing what more can you ask for we are pretty tired so we're gonna make a cocktail and then it's dinner time made a cucumber and jalapeno gin cocktail. We just kind of made it up. It's always refreshing when there's cucumbers in it. So cheers guys. <laughs> oh 
bed. And before it gets too cold tonight, we're gonna go ahead and enjoy these cocktails outside while the sun sets, and then we'll come inside and make some dinner. temperature dropped really fast outside. It's already 50 degrees and it's about 7 p.m. So we're going to come in here and just make a quick easy dinner. We're going to do a nice large salad and we also picked up some pork chops the other day. It's going to be pretty simple but I'm excited for it. Let's get these cooked. So the easy dinner here, but it's just what we needed after that long hike and just a couple great days here in the mountains. We're gonna go ahead and enjoy this and then we're pretty tired tonight, so we'll see what happens after dinner. It got nice and cold last night. I think the low was like 32 degrees. So we woke up and it is definitely heater season. We've been putting it off for a little while, but I don't think we can do that anymore. We were freezing when we woke up. So of course we're gonna use the amenities that we have here in the camper. Just kind of waiting for the sun to come up and warm up our spot a little bit before we go on a walk this morning. I already finished my coffee because it was so warm and just taking these mornings pretty slow. We hope this new alternator charger really elevates our off-grid lifestyle and makes us even more independent and just lets us go longer in between staying at campgrounds and paying for places that we don't necessarily need. Typically, when we stay somewhere for three or four days, we are looking for the next place to charge our batteries because they're running low. But because of the alternator charger, we don't have to worry about it as much. We are leaving soon. So when we get on the road, we'll be able to charge our battery back up to full. And that is just a really nice feeling. One of the main things that we love so much about camping in Colorado is it's mostly free and boondocking off the grid. So being able to pull into the campsites with a full battery is necessary for us. And we just hope that it's gonna solve that problem permanently. Like we've said before, we will be in Colorado for the entire month and we can't wait to experience more fall with you all. It is only going to get more beautiful and we are so excited for that. If you have any questions on the install or just anything for us, leave those in the comments below. We love hearing from our audience and hope you guys have enjoyed watching these videos with us. As always, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. See you next video. Hope you have a large day. That's not how we were starting it. That makes sense? Yeah. <laughs> Very happy to be that. is a way to try this whole thing again. <laughs> <laughs>